Hello everybody and welcome back to Fish Den 365. I'm Dan Herring and welcome back to another edition of Top Water Tuesday. Today we're going to be talking about the Rebel Jointed Minnow. So the Rebel Jointed Minnow has been around for a long time. I don't know how many years, but quite a number of years. And it's an interesting bait and a very good topwater bait when you fish it in the proper manner. And we're going to be going over that today. It comes in three sizes, I believe. Uh, we've got this larger size. Then we've got a medium size. Whoops. And a smaller size, so you can get an idea. I like, when I'm fishing this top water, I like the larger size and the second largest size the best. If I only had one to choose, I'd throw the largest size almost every time. This is a, an interesting perch pattern. This bait's been around for a number of years. It's been an on and off bait when it comes to production. And I think it has some years where it's more popular, some decades, I guess I'd say, where it's more popular than others. And over the years, there's been a number of interesting color patterns that Rebel produced. Some of them I don't think exist anymore today. Like I don't know that you can get this perch color anymore. Maybe you can, but but uh, a lot of what I have, you can, I know you can no longer get. This one's a dace. This one's like a black nose dace color. This is a largemouth bass color. I don't know if they still have that color today or not. They might. This one's no longer available, I don't believe. It's a northern pike pattern. Here's a rainbow trout. Not sure if that's around today. Bone colored one. Good color, by the way. And then here's a black one, but I think I painted it black. I don't remember anymore, but I've caught some really nice fish at night on the black bait. So what makes this uh, Rebel Joint Minnow unique and its own category of top water lure? First of all, it's made of plastic. So we've done some other topics with these kind of minnow baits for Top Water Tuesday, but they were balsa wood or some other type of wood like the Bagley Bangalore, for example. So the Bagley Bangalore floats really high on the surface. If this is the water surface, the Bangalore is, you know, it doesn't, not much of the bait goes below the surface. But because the Rebel is plastic, it still floats, but a good portion of the bait is actually under the water and just the back is sitting out of the water. And that makes it a, a good topwater bait when you have a little bit of a wave action or a ripple on the water. It's also good when there's, when there's a dead still, calm water as well. But it really shines when you have just this little ripple on the water or, or just some very small waves because a good portion of the bait is actually under the water and just the back is floating out. So the fish can see this. And because it has this broken uh, back configuration it looks like it's hurt or crippled right from the from the top looking looking up at it a fish sees this and they see that part of the bait looks like it might be hurt or broken or, or crippled and I think that adds to the attraction of the bait now they also make the bait without the broken back without the joint and it's the same size here's an old dace one but uh, for Topwater Tuesday this, this week, the discussion is the broken back one or the jointed one. The jointed one, from my point of view, is a better topwater bait. This one tends to be a better jerk bait under the water. They also have the exact same body bait in a spoonbill configuration. Now, this one's not meant for topwater, obviously, because the spoonbill makes it dive deep. That's a discussion for another Fish Den 365 video that has nothing to do with topwater back to this one so there's two ways that i really like to fish this bait and one is and, and there's a time of the year that this bait is good it's usually good from late spring right through the fall right through when the water temperature i'll probably stop using it when the water is below 52 degrees you know, that's usually when it starts starts being not the best bait but even at 55 56 57 degree water temperatures in the fall like uh, at Naka Mixon in November, this thing can catch them, and, and it can catch them quite well. Two ways I fish it, one is I'll throw it out there, let it land in the water, let the ripples subside, and just let it sit out there. 
and you know if there's a little wave or a little rocking action then it looks like it's just sitting out there floating half hurt half crippled and then I might just reel a handle you know one full turn of the reel handle or I might use the rod to just push the bait forward so it might uh, it might wiggle a little bit and then just kind of sit there on the surface again I, I fish it very very slowly that way and I usually do this when when fishing for large mouths especially they tend to, to eat your lure within the thir the first third of your of your retrieve in other words you cast the bait out a good percentage of your bites are going to come in that first third of the retrieve less of a percentage in the second third and still less of a percentage in the third third of that retrieve as it's getting closer to the boat in other words and so the but the majority maybe 75 percent is in that first third so i'll fish it slow out there when it's away from me in the boat and uh and i'll stop and go and just let it float out there and let it sit and do its thing and sometimes bass will just come up and crush it other times it'll just come up and just ever so subtly suck it in some of the ones that have sucked this bait in are some of the biggest bass I've caught. So you, you never know how they're going to eat this bait, but it's always an interesting bait to throw. The other way that I like to fish it is just, re, just throw it out there, and, and I'll do this at the end of the cast as well. So let's say, uh, let's say I do that technique where I'm just letting it sit out there. After I'm done doing that, I'll just start a slow, steady retrieve on the surface. Just a very, very slow retrieve, trying to make it look like it's crippled, hurt, uh, that kind of thing. So that so the bait is just waking along the surface or just barely under the water, but still making a wake. And oftentimes that also attracts big fish. They'll come up and eat it when it's, when it's behaving that way as well. And that's how I'll retrieve it back. And then I'll just throw it out and I'll repeat that whole cycle. But those are the two ways I throw it. Now you can fish this bait underwater as well, and it catches fish that way, especially if you fish it erratically underwater. But this is Topwater Tuesday. This is talking about topwaters. And believe me, this is an effective topwater. I caught my first six pound plus largemouth bass on this lure. It was September 13th, 1981, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I was out in the canoe with my dad. It was evening time. The moon, a full moon, was just rising up over the lake. And my dad was fighting a bass. He had one on, it was about 15 inches. And I got a big strike on the Rebel it was actually a northern pike uh, patterned one, one of these. And as soon as the fish hit and I set the hook, it went down and then it came up. And I'll never forget this. It came out of the water with its mouth wide open like a bucket mouth and just, you know, did one of these and then back down. And when I saw that, I got all excited. You know, that was the first fish that I had that was that big. And, and I said, Dad, Dad, get the net. And he's like, well, but I got one on. And I said, quick, hurry up, get, get that one off. This one's much bigger. <laughs> Which he did. He quickly removed that uh, that bass and, and got the net, and we netted it. And I had my first six pound plus largemouth. It was 22 inches, a little over six pounds. And, and uh, I'll never forget that fish. That that burned into my memory. And it was caught on the Rebel Joint and Minnow. This thing catches fish. It also catches other species quite well as well, like northern pike and 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 pickerel and muskies and that kind of thing. And stripers as well at nighttime. So that's the rebel joint and minnow. This is a lure that's been around a long time. It still catches fish today, just like it did back in 1981 when I caught that big one. Give it a try. If you don't have one, they're still out there. You can buy them. I know that Bass Pro, I think, has these. They probably only have three or four colors available, but color is not the big, the most important thing on this bait anyway. Get something with a bait fish profile. Dark back, lighter sides, and you're good to go. I do like... When I'm fishing the Pocono lakes, I like the golden side ones. This one's really gold because on a lot of those lakes, there's golden shiners and the bass love those, the big golden shiners because they're easy to get down. They're a soft dorsal ray finned fish. They're easier to swallow than a bluegill. And so when they're available to eat, I think bass really enjoy eating them. Anyway, if you thought that video was useful and you liked the video, please give me the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. As always, we're certified bassified. Looking forward to getting back out on the water soon. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.